Hi, I'm Dave the RPA Guy, and welcome to another episode of Let's Build in Blue Prism! Here in part 6 of our Let's Build Monitor a Value series, we're going to be taking what we've already done, which is essentially build up the functionality simply to go onto the web page and get the value that we want, the mission value field. We're going to be taking that and going a step further. When we go back to the website, we're going to check to see if the value that's there matches the value that we have received from a user. After we get that going and we're ready to send the notification over to the user, we're gonna have to set up MappyX. Most of the video is about MappyX, but I go ahead and painstakingly show every step of how I install MappyX, get the VBO, and then set up the action. So what we're gonna probably do at some point soon is we'll create a work queue that we'll put the URL into, the words that we should be looking for, maybe we'll track some other things as well. For now, we're gonna hard code it into a data item. So our compared to value will be, we'll call it original mission value. And it's mission statement here. Now I want to know when Dave the RPA guy ever changes his mission. Let's do a little comparison then. Mission value changed. Mission value changed. Uh, original mission value not equal to mission value. What we're going to do is we're going to have some uh, another set of actions occur in the case that the mission value has changed. So uh, notify the user. But if the mission value has not changed, we're not going to notify the user. We're actually just going to continue in a loop. For now, uh, we're we're not going to loop because. I haven't built in anything to avoid infinite loops. Probably have multiple end stages actually. That'll be obvious to us which which path it took. Let's do this. So it should come back as no. Here we go. We're going to launch Facebook, navigate to about, check the mission statement. Is it the same? Uh, well, we shouldn't say is it the same. Has the mission value changed? No. Now let's go and actually change it. So now I'm changing mission statement here to I now have a mission statement. Then we're going to run this. And let's see if it's different. Okay, should get the value. Compare them, and it'll say, oh, it's different. And you can see that it went on this path instead this time. So we've succeeded. Uh, now all we have to do is send an email. In order to send an email, we're going to need an object known as MappyX. If you've worked with MappyX, I just want to share a little moment with you. I'm totally aware of some of the problems with MappyX. And I share your pain. Uh, it'll it should work for us here something that you'll see here that I've changed in this blue, blue prism environment is These utility objects because we started off with a clean environment. We created an object we created a process But eventually you'll come across some pieces of functionality that you need that are not going to be in built in blue prism and I'm uh, for the purpose of these videos I'm considering the blue prism provided blue VBOs to be inbuilt. So when I say oh, I'm just going to use Blue Prism itself, I I consider any objects you import into it to be kind of inbuilt, inbuilt, especially because they're provided by Blue Prism to begin with. So you'll see that all of these are available in the VBO folder when you install Blue Prism. Now there's one thing that's missing, or actually a couple things that are missing here that are other VBOs provided by Blue Prism that they don't include in in the install package. So what we're going to do now is go to the Blue Prism portal. And uh, here's the Blue Prism portal. I've gone to Products, Add-ons, and I'm going to be downloading MappyX 2.0.6. You have to install MappyX to um, 
be able to send emails using your Outlook profile. I'm gonna install that. You also need the VBO for MappyX. So let's go to VBOs on the portal. Uh, some of these will be similar to some of the ones in the in the VBO fo uh, uh, folder, but generally speaking, if they have it here, they don't have it in that folder and vice versa. So the one we want is we're going to use the MappyX VB, the most recent MappyX VBO, which is this one. So we're going to download this XML file into desktop shortcuts. We'll drop it in there. Okay, we'll go into Blue Prism now. I'm just showing this so that in case any of you are thinking like, well, how did he get that? I want to make sure I'm showing you where I got it from. Uh, so I'm going to import. This is the location where I have the release where I downloaded it to. And when it comes through, it's not called exactly what it was on the portal, but BPA object, Blue Prism, Mappy X. Okay. Uh, there's no conflicts because I don't already have an object named that. I'm going to drop that in my utilities object folder. Then I'm just going to minus that so it's not in our way. Uh, so we're going to be using that. You got to make sure you also have MappyX actually installed on your computer. What I'm doing is downloading MappyX 2.0.6, which is the latest version of MappyX, and should work well with Blue Prism 6. Everyone. All right. Close to exit. And then we should have MappyX installed. We have imported the VBO into our environment and we should be able to start using it. Now, there are a couple of errors I expect might happen. If we run into them, then I will show you how to solve those problems. It's pretty simple, but it's problems a lot of people run into. Uh, so what we're gonna do is open up our process again. And right here where we have notify the user, we're gonna put in a call to directly to MappyX. We will go in and choose MappyX, oof, that name, latest version. How can you call it latest version? This doesn't make any sense. What happens when you come out of the version after that? Latest, latest version? Okay. We're just going to do send mail. The profile, we're just going to hard code some of these things, is going to be Outlook. Uh, but it, it could be something else, but it's... Uh, by default, it's going to be Outlook. We're going to send it to Dave, the RPA guy at gmail.com. And the subject will be your watched web value has changed. Okay. And then the message will say something like, okay, that way you can see what I have. In its entirety, if we have any errors in here, I mean, it's not a big deal. Maybe you see one right now and I'll, I'll go back and fix it when we run into the problem. Uh, also, though, if I have any errors, it should tell me right here. Missing link. We have a missing link. Wow. Big surprise. Okay. We're going to send notification. send notification, right? And then it'll just keep doing that every time it runs the main loop, but we don't have a loop yet, so we'll get there. Oh, we have, we do have a problem. Uh, oh, right, right, MappyX gives success. Uh, let's put this over here. And we'll check to make sure it worked. If I can find the decision stage. Send email success. And then we'll just get the flag success. If it's successful, then we'll go down. If it's not successful, we'll throw an error. So that maybe we could try it again. Uh, error. Sending email. We'll do system exception. Oh, here they are. And error description is this. And we'll put in the, forget the text here, uh, error message. <laughs> of course it did. 
course, it threw it to the opposite side that I wanted. That's fine. All right, let's do that. Looking pretty good. Blank values to input parameters, that's fine. Set up, send email. We're gonna have to check the email here, so let's send. Now, the value is still different, so it should still send our email. And it should get the value, it should see it's different and send the email. Is it gonna be successful? Uh-oh. Could not run the object because one of the code stages has a compile error. Remember I said that there we might have an error and MapEx is annoying sometimes. Well, this is not actually, most likely this is not a problem with MapEx. It is a problem with the installation. So let's, it says uh, check for errors for a list of problems. Okay, so we're gonna go to MapEx now. We've got a couple of errors here. Compile an error at top section, line nine, cannot find library, blah, 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 blah. Blue prism mapex, mapex automation.dll. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to uh, File Explorer in Windows. We're gonna start off with C colon backslash program files. And now you can see here that we have the 64-bit section of program files and the 32-bit section of uh, program files, which is a, it's, it's identified by that label of x86. What we're going to have to do is navigate into this uh, x86 area. We're going to go to Blue Prism Limited, Blue Prism Automate, and you'll notice that there's nothing in here except the MapEx uh, VBO. It has been downloaded. When we installed MapEx, it, it did this but we wanted the latest version from the website anyways, which they so aptly named the latest version. We have the Blue Prism MapEx automation.dll, we have TLB file, and some other files. Um, so what I'm gonna just suggest is rather than worrying about which of these to take over, just grab them all, copy, and we're just gonna go over and edit the directory path here. We're just gonna move to the same location in Blue Prism, to, but in the 64-bit program files. And you're just going to paste them right into here. Absolutely. Copy to this folder. Yeah, we do want this. Continue. And there should only be one more file. No, two more files. Right. Okay, so we copied them over here. So now these DLL files are now um, available here. And we should be able to check for errors. And now we don't have any errors. Both of them got taken care of. Now, there are other problems without with MapEx, but, but that is not one of them. It's not MapEx fault that it's in the wrong location. We just happen to have a 64-bit version of Blue Prism, so Blue Prism was not installed in the same place MapEx went to. Uh, okay, let's go ahead, and I don't think we actually need to save the MapEx object because its reference is now good. Now we're back to uh, our process. We are going to run it again because we think that there wasn't really a problem with our code. It was merely that the external reference to Blue Prism's MapEx automation DLL, uh, the reference is right, but the location that it was stored was wrong. We're going to hit start. Okay. Opening, and opening it up again, checking for the mission statement. It's still different, right? And it should have sent the email. Did it send us an email? Look at that. Hello, your watched web value has changed. The URL you provided is, and this is not here because we, we actually have it in the object. It wasn't available here in the process. So we'll, we'll probably move the URL into the process here in a little bit. The original value of a watched item was mission statement here. And the value has changed to, I now have a mission statement. Okay, so maybe I see this, I get the email and I'm saying, man, that's... Fantastic. You still don't have a very good direction there, Dave, the RPA guy. You need to have a mission statement. Well, uh, this brings us to our next thing we need to change. What we'll need to do is take this new one, right? This is now going to be the original value. So we need to take this and set it back into here, into the original value of the watched item. And then now we want to watch it to change from that. Um, maybe we'll, we want to maintain a history of all of the values that it's had. And so that's something we can work on next.
Here in part six of our Let's Build Monitor a Value series, we built in the logic necessary to compare a value that the user gives us to a value that we find on the web page. And then we can tell the user whether or not the value has changed. And so along with that, to give us the ability to notify the user, we went ahead and set up MappyX. And in our next episode, we'll be moving on to forming a loop so that we can have our bot continue running constantly and checking that web page rather than just checking one time. Good day. It was a long video. Thank you for staying with me this long. I go ahead and encourage you to subscribe right above. And then after you've done with that, go ahead and watch the next video if it's available.